I would request uh, Dr. Virinder Sanwan to give his talk on making of a clinician scientist. Thank you very much, uh, Namrata, for the wonderful and very elaborate uh, introduction. But uh, I must also add uh, uh, things that many of uh, the listeners may not know. <clears throat> when I started, I learned English when I was 12 or 13 years old. In a school in my village, we did not learn English from the uh, KG or nursery. And uh, research uh, is, I never had a formal training in research at all, either in the medical school or in the post-graduation or in fellowship. So research has become, came as a, just as a part of my passion of, uh, you know, the, um, the quest for learning and sharing. And primarily the story of making of a clinician scientist is my own story, which I'll be sharing. And I hope that it may have an impact on some of the youngsters who may be entering into the field now or who are just starting their career. This is a uh, case I saw immediately within a few months of joining LVT in 1998. He had a um, recurrent pterygium, underwent surgery uh, many times, uh, I think five or six times before presenting to me. And uh, he had undergone multiple uh, surgeries, all uh, individually different types. When he came, he was on the verge of losing uh, the job as a train driver in Indian railways. And he, has, he had two young boys at that time. And this is the kind of ter uh, terisium, recurrent terisium he had because it was causing uh, diplopia and a limitation of movement. I had no much experience by then uh, of uh, how to deal with such a case. I talked to some of my seniors and everybody said, well, you know, there's nothing much to try and uh, do whatever best you can do. So what I did was I combined oxygen with conjunctal embol autograph with amniotic membrane with mitomycin C. And then after six months did a PTK. And I had uh, followed him for many years. And suddenly after uh, about 10, 12 years later, he brought two young men uh, in the OPD. And he said, sir, I want to thank you for uh, uh, doing something, you know, these both my boys have become engineers now, and I have continued to work in Indian Railways. So sometimes, you know, you have uh, kind of cases that come to your OPD, and uh, what you do is a routine job for you, but it may have an impact on the lives in a very significant way. What happens is when, uh, as a clinicians, when we encounter different situations, especially if the situation is outside our main uh, stream, like for example, if you have a cat track, if you find an atypical problem, so, or sometimes the problems are such that in the medical field or in ophthalmic field, you don't have a solution for that problem. So most of us or many of us keep thinking or uh, keep, uh, you know, have an idea that, oh, nothing can be done. So you just tell nothing can be done. Some of us may think about it and say, maybe um, I should do uh, something about it and uh, reflect on it, keep thinking, keep working. So it depends on how you, you take uh, in the beginning of your career. Like I tell you how I did end up in a uh, fellowship in immunology and uh, uveitis. When I was uh, doing fellowship with Dr. Rao, I saw a patient, young lady from Odisha, rheumatoid arthritis melt in cornea. And he, uh, you know, by then I had read enough about it but he said, you should take the patient to uh, NIMS uh, for a rheumatology consult and tell them that this lady will die if they don't immunosuppress. So I uh, took the patient there, Professor uh, URK Rao, and he said, looked at the patient and did investigation. He said, gentlemen, there's nothing active and you know, there's nothing for me to be immunosuppressive for. And Dr. Rao got very angry and he said, you idiot don't know. And you should, he, you should have thrown the paper on uh, Professor uh, URK Rao's face. Uh, he should treat, otherwise the patient will die. And when I come back, he's again angry on me. I didn't understand what is that I can do about it? because these two big professors, I'm a poor fellow. What is that I can do about it? Then I begin to understand there is a deeper problem because Dr. Rao did not know how to deal or how to do immunosuppression. 
URK Rao did not know what the eye problems are. And the patient was like, you know, shifted between uh, different consultants. And it happens uh, today also in, in different specialties or among ourselves. So I took on myself that I would train in this area and I'll take care of these patients myself without referring uh, these patients to anybody else. So that's why I end up in Mass Eye India because I started looking for uh, what is the best program in this area, ocular immunology. And then uh, you may see patients like this, OCP or other autoimmune disorders. And by doing a fellowship in ocular immunology, I realized these are uh, uh, not a very uncommon problem. And these patients, again, we don't treat them well. So what I learned in a fellowship at uh, Mass End here, um, during my faculty position at LVP, I translated everything I learned into clinical practice. And this is how you do a biopsy in a patient with the suspected with OCP and cryostat machine. I did all the processing myself, harvesting the biopsy, embedding it and cutting, staining. And that's how I trained uh, the, uh, the technicians at LVP and including pathologists because the most pathologists don't have a training in uh, small tissue interpretation especially conjectal biopsy, which is very small. So if you care for some particular problem, you just cannot expect somebody else will design things for you, but you must learn and translate those, uh, you know, learnings into clinical uh, practice at your location. And that's one of my biggest uh, uh, sort of, uh, I would say a strong point that whatever I uh, pick up anywhere, I'll try to bring into my clinical practice and also teach others. Patients with the uh, uh, chemical injuries, you may find cement, chuna retained. And I wanted to start using the amniotic membrane when I came back in LVP 1998. But at that time, there was uh, no uh, option of using amniotic membrane because that was not available outside US. And so we had a fellow from Dr. Sefer Singh who pioneered the use of amniotic membrane for ophthalmic applications in 1990s. So this lady from Thailand spent three months with us. I requested her to teach us the placental processing. I requested Dr. Uh, Foster to um, arrange a placenta and learn from uh, her. And when I came back in, um, in LVP, I started processing the membrane uh, went around to in hand of the placenta. Then I taught Savitri Sarma uh, and her technicians. And then we shifted the procedure into eye bank. And that's how the whole procedure got established. And uh, today, now when I left LVP, uh, we had uh, so many uh, uses of this membrane. And this is just a brief process video of how this process is done. Children. Now I tra train and teach this process to anyone who is interested. After uh, joining uh, Sarov in uh, 2018, I immediately uh, trained and asked the iBank staff under Manisha Acharya and Arpan Gandhi's leadership that we process the amniotic in the house. Yeah. So now we have, uh, in fact, yesterday we had a site life training program for amniotic membrane processing at, at Sarov, the first set of trainees. So <clears throat> this is the uses of amniotic membrane after we started processing in LVP and now the usage is uh, so high that uh, for research, for clinical application. And when I use these technologies, my advice to all young people is think of how you can uh, share your learnings. Like for example, when I started using for different uh, indications, it's not that just uh, doing the surgery, but also at, at some point looking at your outcomes, looking at different indications, their techniques. So you see the an amount of publication we had on, on amniotic membrane uh, application. My name is Louise is Matarai Shengyopon from Zimbabwe. I had reaction. Stevenson Johnson syndrome due to a reaction of sulfur in a drug. Went to Lions Eye Hospital in Kenya. They uh, told me my eyes were melting away, both of them. And they fed me 
here to LV Prasad Eye Hospital in India. When I met uh, Dr. Villesis, my vision was zero because my eyes were not even open at all. There was nothing like left on that eye. He said he wanted to do an immediate surgery for the complete reconstruction of both eyes. He said I had to, to give my eyes uh, time to heal. After that, he was going to do a corrective surgery to, to improve my eyesight. So as the eyes were healing, sight was restored on the right eye. I went through a cataract surgery. And right now, my eyesight on the right has improved from 0 to 40%. Within a space of a year, things have improved drastically. I can now do things independently. I'm able to open my eyes without straining them. I'm able to see around me. And I'm actually very satisfied with the service that I got from the medical staff all around LVP. Dr. VSS is actually a lifesaver. Some people have got a problem with their eyes and they think uh, this is the end of the world. It's not. You just walk into LVP and uh, it's actually a life-changing experience. So how I ended up seeing uh, patients with chemical burn and Stephen Johnson is, uh, you know, another story. When I joined LVP in 98, there were six cornea consultants uh, in the department. And... Um, most of them asked me, what is that I'm going to do? Uh, I'm not, uh, I'm, there are already uh, so many of them doing different surgeries. And then I said, well, uh, you know, I'm not going to do refractive surgery. I'm not going to do anything what they are doing. So what I will do is I said, you send me the patient, which you think you can't do anything about it, or you don't want to see them because uh, you see them and you hate them. So what I ended up was seeing these patients like this, patients with Steven Johnson, patients with OCP, patients with chemical burns. And uh, so my uh, way of looking at things, doing a thing, you will see through this presentation, my um, clinical and uh, translational work limited to these conditions. So when you see, uh, when you read and see these patients, Steven Johnson syndrome, very typical, uh, all kinds of complication, dystichiasis, tracheasis, keratinization, and we tell them to use lubricants. We used to tell them, okay, do this, do that, nothing really much concrete. And we want those patients to walk out of the clinic as soon as possible because we can't stand, we can't answer those questions. And if you look at uh, how the natural history of this condition is, if you don't do anything about, especially the lead margin, and at that time in the beginning, I must admit that First 10, 12 years, I did not have understanding the lead margin is the major problem. That realization uh, came later on. And also in the beginning, we used to think this lead surgery is not the corneal surgeon's job. It should be done by plastic surgeon. So we would refer those patients to uh, oculoplasty. Then what we started uh, doing in about, uh, in I think 2007, 2008 uh, is that uh, by then, um, I uh, started uh, realizing that unless we manage these patients ourselves completely, including lead margin, whatever the surgery is required, we should be doing it. Uh, so lead margin surgery, we started doing, this is what you are saying that before and after uh, MMG, there was a dramatic improvement. And also I have been using the pros lens and during my fellowship in LVP, and I started uh, bringing that technology in LVP at that time and then we brought the production of those lenses. So those things have made a big difference. But uh, in patients like this, there was only hope was MOOKP. So which we learned from uh, Dr. Gita Iyer and Srinu S.K. Rao uh, uh, from SN. And uh, SKR was in private practice by then. So I started learning from him and then implemented in LVP. And we did about, uh, I think around 30 uh, odd patients. And then we uh, also were seeing patients like this young girl in that MOKP is not applicable. So we were very disturbed by these patients that what to do. So we came up with a um, technique called uh, 
M, uh, LVP K Pro. What it was is essentially my idea was that if we do a mucus mucus membrane graft, lead margin MMG, and then you know do a K Pro under the mucosa and bring out the cylinder, and that was the uh, essential change in slightly longer optical cylinder. And this is the uh, stages of surgery and uh, technique of doing it. Now it, it's it's quite established technique. We have published uh, uh, quite a bit comparing this with the other techniques. And then we also uh, felt that MOKP is not a surgery that every surgeon can do or every center can do because it's very complicated, it takes a lot of time and uh, patient also develop um, different complications and it's very unsighty. So if you compare the LVP K Pro with the uh, MOKP, cosmetic outcomes are very different. Even though the short term outcomes are available for LVP K Pro, uh, MOKP has a long history. Then we also started acquiring the, these technologies like endoscopic VR system that helped us to see the, assess the posterior segment directly before doing these complicated surgeries. So we continue to refine the management of patients with. Steven Johnson, OCP, and end-stage uh, ocular surface diseases. At the same time, you know, when you do this work, you cannot do uh, by yourself. You have to develop team, de mentor younger surgeons. So I started uh, mentoring Cyan very early on when he was a fellow, hired him as a faculty, and then pushed him to do the ocular surface uh, stem cells. And I told him that mesenchymal cells something that I want him to focus and that, that's where we sent him to um, uh, James Fundenberg and uh, he came back and then started doing these things. But we have been very fortunate in learning from the masters for the uh, K-Pro and uh, have been very blessed to get such a uh, support from all around. There were other things like, you know, patients uh, with SJS, when I uh, encountered that there is a cataract in these patients and everybody says that if you do a cataract, you know, dry eye, this will be a mess, this will be a Pandora's box. But I didn't uh, really, then I said, how do to help these patients? Then I started doing surgeries, I did not have much problem. And now the largest series of these uh, patients we published uh, in 2016 in BJO of 40, 32 patients, 40 eyes. And uh, I have really not encountered major issues in actually doing the surgeries. And it has improved the quality of life of these patients. So again, doing the surgeries in atypical situation, cataract is a common surgery. Most of us or many of us are very good at it, uh, but doing in these kind of indications, then learning and teaching others, uh, you know, is that is what the clinical research is all about. Clinical research is not about statistics or about analyzing the data alone. It is learning from your own doings and then sharing those learnings with others. A small story about uh, limbal stem cell deficiency in VKC. In 2001, I encountered a patient, a young patient from uh, Indore who had bilateral limbal stem cell deficiency with a long history of VKC. And nobody would believe that it's a limbal stem cell deficiency. So I try, what did I did is I did uh, in that boy did limbal allograft, cultivated limbal allograft from mother. And in another patient who didn't want allograft, I did the amniotic membrane alone. And then we compared over next uh, year and a half, two years. And we published that paper in um, cornea that is in 2005. So and over a period of time, build the evidence that there is a, it's a very uh, important clinical entity and it's missed by uh, clinicians. And now it is quite well established, but Western countries still, you know, they, uh, they seem quite skeptical because they don't see this condition, uh, VKC in their populations at so severe and so advanced. So when you are in a teaching organizations or a leadership position, you must al always think that how do we create leaders? How do we uh, create a learning environment? How do we share or you know, scale up your learnings so that this can reach to other surgeons in other part of the country and the world so that patient uh, can benefit? And that's what my uh, goal has been. And maybe it's not by uh, nature. I mean, it's not by intention. It's just the nature, the way I am. Uh, and uh, if you do a K-Pro, you must create teams. We did created a very solid team in LVP and similar thing I have done it at Sarov immediately after coming because this is something that I do quite often. 
the stem cells uh, very simple story uh, when i as i told you when i came lvp nobody was doing it some of the surgeons told me well you know they have done and left it because they don't work these are not made for india these are just for to write papers so i told them okay if you think that way let me also try if i fail i'll join you if i don't then i will continue whatever i like so <clears throat> i initially 98 98 second half and 99 started doing cadaveric then live related and then cultivated very soon uh, in in 2001 since then we have moved on to mesenchymal cells and uh, the other uh, technologies which i'll say to you as we go uh, further down along so my point is that even though i was never trained in stem cells at any stage either during my fellowship uh, at lvp or in mass and ear but still if you think that you can help the patient build your uh, partnerships and you can learn things as you do the things and along with your collaborators so this is the technique of uh, growing the cells which was criticized in the beginning by all world authorities and i used to face a criticism but i would did not bother because i am getting i was getting very good results so there there was no worry in terms of there's no need to listen to someone when you are getting good outcomes so that resulted in the world's largest uh, stem cell treatment for any organs in human body in adult patients it also resulted in establishing a stem cell lab proper stem cell lab which uh, was inaugurated by uh, then president uh, apj abdul kalam and later before i left lvp we created a world class cgmp facility at lvp for stem cells so you know the work which started as a small uh, kind of a clinical based treatment resulted into a translational center and has uh, produced uh, excellent outcomes and created a training system for other people then you come back to the full circle that you we started growing the cells in the lab which which i realized that it is it's it's very difficult for other people to practice this technology because this is limited to only big centers and it's very expensive so started thinking about how to how we can do uh, the uh, stem cells without having a stem cell lab and this has now the slet has become a standard of care for uh, limbal stem cell deficiency globally and uh, during this we also developed a synthetic amniotic membrane which i'll show you some cases later and you know there are people who now ask can you do slet without uh, fibrin glue and to my surprise uh, professor malugin from masco has published a paper precisely on the how you how he does uh slat without the um, fibrin glue uh, so it's you know once you create a, a new technique people can find innovations for for situations suitable to them so this is a patient where i did a synthetic uh, amniotic membrane which you see here and uh, this was the first in man study which i was doing at lvp now this paper is submitted to uh, publication and hopefully will be published soon and these are the results you can expect to slet and now there are so many surgeons doing slet globally and the number of publications and number of patient being treated is going uh, uh, every uh, year you will see there's a big jump but i think the most important uh, outcome of uh, you know uh, this technology is that the slet is one tenth the cost of the flat and uh, i'm glad to tell you that this morning we received a a uh, communication from bjo or paper is accepted uh, on this technology of comparing and the cost effectiveness of uh, slat versus the uh, clat now you see that this work we did but at the same time it also if you are a inquisitive and learning type you also start publishing you also learn these things from your colleagues you read you present so that is how you develop a uh, on the job training so it's not um, something uh, i don't find it's very difficult uh, because as i did the things i started also asking questions which will help patient refine the surgeries so if you'll see my publication most of the um, 250 odd publication i have 50% or 70% of them are on on related to the stem cells and the work which i have done directly 
this is one example i want to say to you that i did not have a, again a formal training in research but this is a an opportunity came uh, to me in 2009 a lady a professor from sefil professor sila mcneil wrote a mail asking me whether i would like to collaborate with her i had no idea who she is but i looked at uh, the internet on on her cv looked very very impressive lady uh, with so much of experience in biomedical research i said yes madam we will definitely and she immediately wanted a um, write a grant with me for welcome trust under affordable healthcare in india so we got that grant uh, of developing a safer simpler and cost effective uh, accessible way of doing the stem cells and this was one of the aim was to design a synthetic membrane why synthetic amniotic membrane because the human uh, synthetic membrane human amniotic membrane has a potential for transmission of infection contamination other things and during that development of that technology slat came as a byproduct because you know what happened she uh, only gave me this idea she said you know when the one day we will develop a um, tea bag approach to the stem cells i said she i didn't understand what what tea bag means she said well you know if uh, we can make tea black tea white tea tea without milk without sugar without this that so you should be able to customize and she said what i mean is if we have the plga membrane we can do the stem cells in the eye we don't have don't need a lab and that time i realized oh my god this is possible then i told her that madam i will do the surgery in next two days using the amniotic membrane she said no 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 this is the research question you can't do it i said in mentally i already thought about how we are going to do the surgery i am going to do the surgery so that's how the slat was born so always helpful if you have people collaborating with you from outside your field so we did lot of engineering work the uh, product development work in sefield all the chemical engineers and uh, phd's uh, then we did the growing of these cells on human as well as the um, rabbit corneas human cornea we did in lvp the rabbit cornea seeded in in sefield and then uh, you know cover uh, used different uh, coating laminin fibrin and saw the cells growth and we found uh, comparing on both we found the growth is comparable on amniotic membrane as well as the synthetic membrane then we did a label retaining studies and then transprobe the cells from the membrane to the human cornea and then finally rabbit study which was done in uh, vimta labs in hyderabad and this also proved that this this is quite safe and not very toxic then we applied for a human trial which tested our patients because it took four three four years for us to get approval from dcgi and then we did five studies out of this this is one, those those patient uh, one of the patients and this is the team uh, which was involved in the from both the sides it was led by me from indian side and sila from the uh, uk side and the we had about 15 publications out of this grant so how does it help me i got uh, because of collaboration and developing this work i got to work with basic uh, scientists like phd in chemistry and physical sciences who would help in transporting the membrane uh, keeping the membrane at room temperature for a year so you learn these things by doing yourself the most of this this is very high impact journal biomaterials and this ma main paper was published in in this in 2013 we did lot of uh, we got lot of public uh, publicity uh, both in uk and india because of it was a high profile grant then this grant came by as for um, uh, with the U us sweden uh, collaboration between me and professor may griffith and this was for biosynthetic cornea this was another area of my interest for from very beginning but it was going at a slow pace so this is a uh, recombinant human collagen uh, cornea uh, made in the lab in lvp and then it is we are just cutting it on, a, on in a wet lab trying to understand how it will behave what how we will do it in the human surgery and this is the human uh, patient which we did uh, with the approval from irb this is uh, was cut this was recipient was cut with the femoral laser and then the corresponding uh, size of the uh, recombinant collagen was brought in and uh, put on to the bed with the only sutures and this is the follow up and that patient still maintains good vision in 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 that eye 
This particular paper was a collaborative work between Cardiff University, Filato Institute, and uh, University of uh, uh, Ottawa. So, and these were mostly acute infections or burns or other kind of hot corneas. And the uh, outcome was published in a, in a re, uh, Nature uh, Regenerative Medicine uh, journal. In the process, uh, learn to develop intellectual property uh, in, in mesenchymal cells in liquid uh, cornea. We have a uh, few patents now. As I was doing this work with Meg Refit and others in, in um, then I started thinking that, uh, you know, there is a, this uh, startup company, Pandorum Technologies, the founders came and met me and they said, we need a big challenge in Konya. Can you give us some challenging task? So I'd give them at that time, can you develop a liquid cornea? I explained my concept and the concept in brief was that I wanted to use the discarded human corneas from the eye bank, decellularize them, convert the collagen into a powder. And my simple idea was to mix that with uh, fibrin glue and mesenchymal cells, and we can uh, do in de novo regeneration. And that idea has now picked up and refined and moved uh, along. And since then, I have been working them uh, on, on this technology, developing further. In, uh, after moving to, in LVP, we had a good setup. And now we, I have a setup here in the Daba Research Foundation in Ghaziabad, where we do animal work on rabbits. And this is just an example of the liquid cornea with uh, mes mesenchymal exosomes or liquid cornea with polymer alone or just the cyanoacrylic glue. And you can see the um, corneas with the uh, liquid cornea with MSC exosomes heal very fast and uh, epithelize samples very quickly. And uh, this is uh, the clinical photographs and um, opacity scores. The, the liquid cornea uh, grade 13, which is almost near normal, while the cornea cyanoacrylate glue is very bad. So <clears throat> the uh, early results okay. are, seems very interesting. Now we have a high-end equipment, including femtolaser, OCT attached to a robotic arm, intraoperative, um, the uh, Galileo topographer, microscope, surgical instrument, rabbits. So the whole work is uh, uh, going on in, in, in DRF. I have uh, a PhD student and a optometrist and a clinician. In, in 99, 2000, what happened was, um, I was also doing UVitis. I was trained in UVitis at Mass and Year. And there came a trial, clinical trial. And I had no training background, again, in clinical trials. And there was no clinical trial system at LVP. So I participated in this uh, very large international uh, um, trial where we recruited the highest number of patients globally and earned 250,000 US dollar uh, in the process for the Institute. And since then uh, developed, uh, did many clinical trials which were funded by the industry and also developed the clinical trial center now, which is run by Dr. Raja Narayanan at LVP and is doing very well. So these are some of the grants, uh, um, not all of them, some of them. So what else I do in LVP? <clears throat> Started an engineering group and an innovation center in collaboration with the uh, MIT of Boston and Bits Pilani uh, Engineering School in Hyderabad. Established a accommodation research lab with uh, uh, Australia and a special co collaboration with Gobar Engineering in Germany, where we are developing a known laser-based LASIK system. Uh, which is still going on in LVP led by Praveen Krishna. And the accommodation lab is uh, still going on in LVP, uh, which is led by uh, Dr. Asik Muhammad, who was my PhD student. The engineering group was led by, is still led by uh, Asutos Richaria, who has been my PhD student. And I also started a, a molecular research in uveitis and for cornea uh, with Santan with a one crore seed grant. So these are some of the uh, things that as a clinician, uh, I started in addition to other things, just because I had interest in these areas. So in summary and conclusion, for someone who had no training, no even Eng proper English learning as a child, uh, publishing uh, in peer reviewed 240 plus papers and um, practicing a collaborative uh, research 
developing new techniques and so many things to for me personally i feel it's a very uh, fulfilling career so far and my goal here at serof is to replicate what i did in lvp at this uh, translational uh, center uh, and we are establishing hopefully we will soon inaugurate a center for, for corneal uh, translation or uh, you know center corneal regeneration along with the innovation center and uh, other things in in serof in due course of time thank you very much